Wrestling fans, we missed him in Tampa, but have no fear. Demolition X, the masked superstar, one half of the greatest tag team in WWE history, returns to MWF Studios in downtown Melrose, Massachusetts for two big nights, Saturday, May the 22nd, Sunday, May the 23rd. Axe will be taping historical episodes of Wrestling Insiders along with live shows featuring cyber autograph signings. Demolition Smash signed a limited number of photos when he was with us in Florida. Axe can add his six signature to give you a beautiful collectible head on over to bostonwrestling.com to pre-order yours now and keep wrestling legends working wrestling fans around the corner around the world i'm dan marotti and i'm mr usa wwe hall of famer tony atlas the road to wrestlemania has begun wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves you got to see what we have in the ebay store check it out at Night of Champions 2020, Tribal Chief Roman Reigns successfully defended the WWE Universal Championship against his cousin, Jey Uso, in a must-see battle. Here is your chance to own a piece of Roman Reigns moments before battle on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. It's number 19 of only 50 made. Includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting. You'll also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo in an on-air shout-out on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Roman Reigns autograph poster now! Ah, uh, Chia! Why, hello! I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw. It's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and rock and roll journey through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to another episode of Wrestling Inside of Current Events. I'm Dan Marotti, along with my partner in crime, longtime Boston Wrestling MWF associate, Mr. Dave Cotter. Dave, how is the world treating you tonight? Or today? Very good. You know, worked all day. It's a beautiful day out. You can't beat it. It's a perfect New England day. What would you say? Well, it is a beautiful New England day. I happened to wind up in Boston for a little while this afternoon. If there were cameras tracing me, 
Uh, and today was a reality show as far as the happenings in the world of Dan Marotti. I think people would say reality TV has worked. It was such a crazy day. I was here <laughs> early this morning doing some voiceover work around oh, about 930. And then, like I said, I, I had to flee for a few hours, but I am back. I could not miss out on our chance to discuss what was a hellacious episode hellacious. of WWE Monday Night Raw last night from the award-winning Thunderdome is... Uh, Adnan Verk told us with such great passion so many times last night. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, it was. Um, it was not so, as extreme like, as I visit with New Jack, but then again, very few things in life can be, I guess. Nothing can be like that. Um, so like we said, it's Raw from May 10th, 2021. We kicked it off this week. Did you notice they did a lot of pyro to kick it off? Yes. Like old school style? That's not like that every week, or am I just missing it? No, it did seem like there was a little more than usual. Maybe it was to make up for the lack of action. <laughs> yeah, They said, you, you know what, we'll get it out of the way with the pyro in the first minute and a half. Right on. Uh, after the pyro went off, we had Charlotte Flair's music hit. She comes down to the ring. Uh, we get a match, which is Charlotte, Nia Jack, Shayna Blazer with Reginald versus Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose, and Asuka. Uh, during the match, Alexa and Lily end up on the swing set as the match is going on, but there's not much to talk about the match. So that's why I'm just doing the key points. Um, during the match, Alexa and Lily are on a swing set. They come out there to keep their eye on someone, they said. We go to commercial. We yeah. come back. They show them Alexa and Lily continue to watch along, you know, sitting there swinging back and forth. Uh, the match is back and forth. I know what you probably thought. Too much women, too long. It was kind of a long match. Uh, Shannon needs buckles as she's going to tag Nia. And as that happens, Asuka hits her with the kick and pins her for the three count. After that, over the speaker through the house, um, Alexa and Lily are laughing. And they're just looking at them, meaning all six girls are just like, huh, what's going on here? So what did you think of that? What did you think of that? It was almost like a promo um, in a match. It, it was just... To, to me, a complete net a waste of time. Like we've talked about before, it's like they went to Waffle House before the taping and wrote down the <laughs> show on a napkin. But am I right or wrong? I know sometimes no. you remember current WWE better than me. Um, no, you're totally right with that. Like some of this stuff is like, where does this even come from? It just doesn't make sense. You know, it's, it's almost like they're not trying anymore for Raw. I, I don't know. Am I wrong in the fact that before WrestleMania, didn't Nia injure Charlotte and put her out of action, or am I remembering it wrong? No, you're totally right. That's exactly what happened. And I don't think Adnan made a reference to that. Am I right yeah. or wrong? No, he didn't say no. He has no clue anyway, so I didn't expect him to. Well, I, well not just Adnan, but I mean none of the commentators. They didn't make no, a reference no, to they, that. No, no one mentioned anything, but especially uh, him, no. So the woman gets injured. She's put out of action. Then two months or so later, to be generous, maybe three months later, however long it was, she's back in action. Now she's teaming with the woman with no reference made to the fact that she injured her and put her out of commission. They're just tag team partners all of a sudden. Exactly. And they wonder why nobody gets attached to the wrestlers anymore. And then you kick it off with this, which bothers me because you oh, want to bring viewers terrible. in. Right. Yeah, you bring viewers, viewers in and it's like, what's going on here? This is what we're going to nah, flip, change it on to whatever was on last night. I don't know. <laughs> they got to they gotta start putting more effort into Raw or something because SmackDown's, you know, doing really well. I mean, you know, I think it's a much better watch. You know, again, it's tough on the people on Raw because it is a three-hour show as opposed to two. So it is a little unfair to compare the two show we'll to show a little bit. In. But, I mean, most of the time I think it's fair to say that you and I enjoy SmackDown. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And most Monday nights I can't wait for the show to end. And this was and one of know, them. And you know what? That's the truth. And that's what I hate because I love Raw. Monday Night Raw was like my thing. It's the staple of WWE from when my childhood pretty much, you know what I mean? It I was, was the institution. Kid. Right. And now it's almost like, whoa, what's going on here? Is You know, I'll always watch it because that's just how I am. But it's like, why? But I think anyways, it has run into the same problem that WCW ran into with Nitro when the networks, you know, when the the networks became whores. Oh, we can get that extra hour of the big rating and so on and be one of the top cable channels. But while they are, you know, successful in getting, even though the third hour of Raw tanks compared to the rest of the show, it still is one of the higher rated hours of cable TV for the night. It's just the quality of the show has gone down the toilet. And I think the same could be said for Nitro when they went Well, you made hours. a good point. Well, that's what I was going to compare it to. Like the last 
probably six months of Nitro. This is what Raw is, it feels like. Just a show that's just thrown on, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like they don't care. It's almost like they know they're going out of business. But obviously, WWE isn't going out of business. They just know they got the money, so whatever. I don't know. I'll I'll say this. At least as far as for what creatively it may be missing, the quality has never been as bad as those last year or so in Nitro when they went three hours. But I think Raw now has been three hours when did they go to three hours? Was it for the thousandth episode back yeah. in? Oh no, yeah. I don't think it. I th- no, think it was two thousand and twelve though. For it. Right, but they did a special for it, like you know what I mean, for a couple. I know they did a few three hours before it was actually turned into three hours. Yeah, they teased it like once or twice yeah. a month. They'd go to three hours, like it was a treat. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, if I, I'm pretty sure it was the summer of two thousand and twelve. I know it was July. I remember that. I don't remember wh- what the. I remember they did the 900th Raw in Boston, so maybe it was the 1,000th Raw. Because remember, for the 900th Raw, we had that Undertaker and Bret Hart match that never took place. Were you living I in got Boston your, for that I one? just looked it up. It's uh, July 23rd, 2012. Isn't that sad? I remember. Yep. And what was it the was occasion? The was, it was Okay, it was so that's when they went episode. to three hours. And for that, yep. the past nine years... Thank you, Google. A lot of weeks. Thank you. Some people do refer to me as Google. But um, <laughs> the past nine years, it's it's harder to watch than it is enjoyable to watch more often than not. And that's a shame because I think yeah. if they just stacked up the roster, like for all that can be said about WCW, until the end when uh, Bischoff was out and Bill Bush kind of took over the reins, it was always a very, very fresh show, even if there was a lot of nonsense and things that insulted your intelligence they, they, they overspent in a lot of ways there were weeks they were flying in 150 talents to nitro i mean imagine if raw had 150, 150. different talents to work with That's... on those three hours again it was a huge colossal waste of money it was an overkill but just imagine if raw had 60 people to work with compared to what they have fly now fly in for raw well not fly in but like just in general how many people are backstage you think Everybody that's on the roster. Yeah, but how many is that? I don't know. Oh, what am I gonna nowadays, to on de- for Raw, I'd probably guess 30, 35, if we're lucky. That's what I was going to say. What a Royal Rumble, 30, 30. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the problem with that is, and again, it, it seems like I'm knocking the women, but a lot of those 35 people are women. So you have a very yeah. small women's division of what, maybe 8 to 10 women, and then you have right. 20 to 25 guys, and it gets stale really quick, no matter how many drafts and trades wow. and interbrand invitationals they want to do. It just gets stale quick. Absolutely. Nitro, well, from- for all its faults, like I said, they were always fresh bodies. You never know, knew who or what to expect. And that's one thing I'll always give them credit for. They always kept that. that show fresh. There might have been a lot of nonsense, especially with the NWO overkill once they got hot to the point people didn't want to see it anymore. But you always had f- different matches as opposed to feeling like you were watching the same thing every single week. Oh, you're definitely not wrong. Definitely not wrong. All right, we continue. So we're backstage, and we have uh, Kofi and uh, Xavier Woods. Riddle shows up and says a few weeks they oh. will be <laughs> they will be the real tag team RK bro because they're going to file their paperwork that Kofi uh, said they need to do. Yeah, that, talking that about him. Then they start talking about him, tomatoes and cartoons, which I didn't write anything about. I just wrote that Randy shows up and they talking about Randy getting hit with tomatoes. What he, what he finds funny is uh, ending and basically, sorry, let me say he didn't say, basically act any of that he just looked at them like seriously pretty much how probably we were watching it as we were watching it on randy orton is the voice of reason for the wrestling fan at home in 2021 exactly and then he cuts uh, the best part of the promo which was what he finds funny is ending careers kicking people in the head and uh setting things on fire simple sweet says what he does and then walks away i love that part the rest of it what the hell's the point just to make it a little bit longer to fill that three hour gap we're talking about. They have made know, Matt man. Riddle a very uninteresting, foolish, boring character for whatever the reason. And I've said it for years. And it's not because I have a personal attachment to Kofi where he wrestled here in Boston wrestling MWF, but new day for whatever the reason was able to pull off sports entertainment. Riddle right on. cannot pull off sports entertainment. They have castrated no. that man to the point where there's going to be less and less interest of him 
the more and more they do with him, which is sad because he is a phenomenal athlete. And exactly. And they're so keen to show his entrance. Every time he flips the sandals in there, they uh, have to show that. They repeat what, yeah. What's the point? What, what's the point? That doesn't impress me at all. I, <laughs> you know? I have no I idea. You need to ask, um, uh, what do you call it? The younger Marathi. What what if he likes that? Because I would love to know if it appeals to someone his age. You know what? That's I actually I am gonna ask him. I, I don't remember him being a huge fan from WrestleMania, but that weekend was so crazy and with the weather elements. Yeah. I don't know if Matt Riddle's sandals really came up in deep conversation, <laughs> but you know, hopefully if we him and I get in the right car again, I, him and I can have that conversation. Yeah, I just I'm just curious if it appeals to maybe his age, because it doesn't appeal to me, it doesn't appeal to you. No, I, I think it's nonsense. And when you look at that, the average age of the fan watching Raw is a 55-year-old man. I mean, I <laughs> I don't see the... I, I think that's the uh, just another reason why they're in the, the rut that they're in. I, again, right I don't know why. And maybe the conversation has happened. And, you know, you, you never want to hurt a relative's feelings. But how hasn't Vince McMahon, with three grandsons, the age he has, sat down and watched the show with them and say, what do you guys think? You know what I mean? He's got the best sounding board of all trying to get a young audience. He's got three grandsons. You know, they came out with uh, Shane O'Mac, Stone Cold, oh, yeah. before he got into Hell in the Cell with The Undertaker. <laughs> so, I mean, yep. those kids have probably got to be between, what, maybe 10 and 16 or so at this point? Oh, the yeah, three of them? absolutely, because they were old enough to come down and do their little yeah. things. So, yeah, they have to be. So, to yeah. me, that would be, I, I love to ask little Marathi what he thinks about the shows, because it's interesting to see what a young person thinks about it. When, the, when right that's on. the demographic you want. If you look back at the Attitude Era, what was the average age of the fan that was watching? It was teenagers into the early 20s. My it age. would fluctuate yeah. a little bit. And now and, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's people to, that are almost old enough to be my father that watch it. What the best thing what about Attitude is you would go to school the next day. I couldn't wait to get go to school and talk to my buddies about mm -hmm. it. This, what am I going to go to school and be like, did you see real flip his sandals? Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Do you remember when Stone Cold drove the bit? It's like, that's, I couldn't wait to go to school and talk it with my buddy. It's just, it's so different. So crazy and different. And it could uh, be so bad. much better where it's just, like I said, the, the quality of the athlete isn't the problem. In most and cases, you know a lot of the women athletes have, we could remark about. But You know what's crazy too is they have so much more money now than they did back then. Exactly. That they could do so many different things. I don't know. Think of the people, the, the 40 or so talents they've gotten rid of over the past year alone. Imagine if they yeah. just had those. You know, one thing I was always keen on, and this goes back to when I worked with Ed Cohen in WWF, the fans that have no idea who that is, proud to say I worked for the second man ever hired by Vince and Linda McMahon when they took over the company after Howard Finkel. Ed was responsible for uh, trying to put together the live event schedule when they would run sometimes three or even four towns a night at its peak back in 87 and 88. But one suggestion I made to him was, outside of the top 20 guys to try and save money, that you know you're not going to put in heavy featured storylines and so on and so forth, why not just give them simple TV contracts, book them for one date per week with, you know, obviously right. Raw or SmackDown or whatever, throw them yep. a grand, two grand a week, and then say, you know what, the rest of the time, if you want to go work indies, autograph signings, conventions, knock your socks off. You're just committed to us for the one day a week to be a TV performer, not someone that's going to get a lot of wins, not someone that's going to be putting a lot of heavy material. If they get injured, it really wouldn't interrupt the flow of the show. And I think if right you on. did that with every one of those people that they got rid of, they would have looked better for one. They wouldn't have looked as cruel and callous releasing so many people during the pandemic. But again, think of all the fresh bought. Not every one of them would have taken it, obviously. There's been the Gallows and Andersons that have gone on to make pretty good money uh, with full-time deals, but those that haven't got those full-time deals, unless it was someone that was a problem in the locker room that couldn't be resolved, why not keep all of them? If they could have tried to work out a deal for less money that could have been a, a, appealing to both sides, where they, it wasn't a full-time commitment from the talents to have to give to WWE just one out of six days, uh, one out of seven days a week, you know, I, I bet a lot of them would have taken them up on it. Right on, uh, yeah. I totally agree, and I like that idea. I think e even someone like uh, Carlito, who I cannot believe 
Well, I can believe it, knowing how things have gone there. But in a perfect world, I can't believe that he's not there right now. Oh Same thing. God. You offer him, geez, Carlito, we'll give you two grand a week. We'll have you just do, you know, show up for Raw, main event, whatever, pay-per-view weekends and so on. The rest of the time is yours. You can make as little or as much money as you want in those off times. And you know what? I think there's a pretty good chance he would have taken it where he's been a free agent for so long. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot Someone, of guys that fall into that category. Right. I, I bet Zack Ryder might have done yeah. it. Brett, my, Kurt Hawkins, EC3 would have yeah. been a good one. Like, there's so many talents. Uh, we could keep on going with that. Um, we're backstage still. We see MVP walking up to uh, Braun's door. He walks right in. Then there's a camera already in the locker room that shows <laughs> Braun talking to someone. Uh, kind of looked like a small version of D'Lo Brown. That's what I got out of it. I don't know who he was. Uh, MVP comes walking over and says, if Bobby had to lose the title, he'd rather lose it to you. Somehow, uh, Drew, if Drew gets is, is so injured in this match tonight, he couldn't compete at Backlash, and it would end up being a one-on-one -on -one match at Backlash. And Braun just looks at him and goes, I don't like you. And basically, they just ponder the idea a little bit. But I don't know. I don't. Why would the camera already be in the damn locker room? Why not follow him in? That is one thing I would eliminate from professional wrestling altogether. At least on, you know what, if you wanted to keep it maybe on one show to keep it a little different, okay. But the, to me, I would scrap the whole camera in the locker room idea. Right. Oh, Unless totally it was for agree. like just a segment where you have the nameless, faceless female interviewer of the month doing a, a you know a planned interview a with regular, the talent. Yeah, right. a regular, yeah. As far one. as following talents around and talents looking so stupid that they'd have these private conversations with the camera on them, that is <laughs> one thing I would eliminate from every aspect in every program in wrestling. One man's Russia. opinion, but no, I totally agree because it got me too, and I'm like, what the hell. Uh, yeah, we're still backstage. We have Adam Pierce. Still talking backstage. To, yeah, Adam Pierce is talking to Priest. Uh, Miz and Morrison come walking over. Pierce says, I have an idea for the match at Backlash. If John uh, basically says, Priest says, if John beats me, you get to pick the stipulation. And if I win, I get to. So, all right, here we go. Why um, do they need to be a stipulation at all? I don't know. I, I don't one, know. Why I, mean... just have, I don't know. <laughs> I have. I can't answer it. I have no idea. Oh, and it gets uh, even better once the match comes. But keep going. Right, right on. Uh, from there, um, we have uh, Jinder Mahal. A little promo before he goes down to the ring. Uh, nothing smells better than fresh uh, competition. Uh, Bear and Shanky are his partners. He introduces them. But I gotta say this. I am very happy to see Jinder Mahal. I don't know how you feel about him. I think he's a great character. I think he's in great shape, and I think he can work. He can talk. I think the the match that we're going to talk about was really good with him. Um, I just don't know how you can't debut him some other way. No, instead he's on main event already having a match that you find out about. So you already know he's back, yeah. and then yeah. you don't do anything with him. He was a few performer WWE champion. Doesn't that mean anything? Nope. Doesn't that mean anything? Like I don't get it. Uh, like I said, it we was have like Jinder Jack Mahal. Swagger after they took it off of him. It's almost like yeah. it never happened. Like he was a great heel champion. I loved him. You can talk about it in a uh. second when you got him, but I just want to get into the match. Uh, it was Jinder Mahal versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, like I said, I love Jinder. He's in great shape. It was a good match. Jinder Mahal won by pinfall. Now, what did you think of? What do you think of Jinder Mahal? I don't think we've ever really talked about him. I I don't I think they it was an overkill putting the title on him. I understand what they were trying to do. They were trying to make a new superstar instantly, and I oh, can yeah. respect the effort that they put into it. Do I think he's a guy at this point you can get some TV main events out of? Sure. Is he a guy that I would put in pay per view main events or put in the world title picture? No. Never or just not right now. Uh, I would probably say never, but you never say okay. never in wrestling because, you know, injuries right. and things like that can happen. But just with the, with the roster they have right now, I just, I don't see him as a, a, a there's a lot of guys they have in the main event picture though, to be honest, I don't see as a world championship pay-per-view caliber main event as that we see from time to time. But I, I just, I don't see that much in him. I would say you go back to that Daniel Bryan from, uh, 2014, uh, when he went on to have the big moment in New Orleans, I would say he is a quote unquote B plus player. I think he's someone see, you can me, get some TV main events out of, but I just don't see him as a guy that you put headlining a, a pay per view. See me, I could see, 
I don't know. I could see right now what I'm going to say, and you, I don't know how you'll feel about it, but with him, right now, with what's going on at WrestleMania Backlash, you have Drew win the title. You build up oh. Jinder enough. You get Jinder <laughs> versus Drew at like a, you know how they were in the three man band and all that crap. You can build on that story, have something there. I think that would be great because they're both big guys. They both can go. I just feel like and they that's have a the history. way you got. Right. I think that's the way you go because at least you can tell a story. Right now with Braun, Bobby, and Drew, there's really no story. We've just seen the same matches how, and the same about, combination. How about this? That's a better idea that I like, and it's not too far off from what you just said. How about an angry gender? You you don't even bring him back before the pay-per-view. You have him return at the pay-per-view, and, and you cost, have him cost McIntyre the yep. match. That's, that way, Bobby still gets to remain the champion. There you go. And Drew has a hot feud coming out of the Holy pay-per-view shit. headed into the you summer. You know what? You never know. That might actually goddamn happen. Well, but the problem with that is they already brought him back, so it's not as much right, of a surprise. Saying, if they, if it was a complete surprise, that. it could have been cool, you know? But, but what I'm saying is, you know, WWE ain't going to care about that. They'll still do it. That's actually no. I like that. You know, That's I, I, perfect. Let's hit the pause button for one second. I want to ask my good friend here in the studio, Justin. Justin, can you hear me? What do you think of Jinder Mahal? Do you think he's world championship material? He used to be. But he doesn't think now. All right. Well, thank you, Justin. He didn't even take his mask off. He said his mask on his entire internship. And I said, after this coronavirus ends, he's going to walk down Main Street one day and say hello to me. And I'm going to say, who the fuck is this? But anyway, <laughs> All right. back to Ron. So, <laughs> yes, sir. So we're um, we're backstage again. They show, show Sonya on the phone backstage. Charlotte comes walking over. But we don't hear any interaction because they go to commercial. Yeah. We I didn't notice. We, Did Sonya have the Jim Mitchell outfit on last night? I don't remember. She had the black. It was a black one. All black. All black. All right. Yeah. Uh, from there, we had Elias. We came back from Russia. We oh. had Elias and uh, Jackson oh. Riker holding a whole big barrel of tomatoes. Oh. AJ had almost come over, and uh, AJ says, what is this? He says, no tomatoes and no um, no joking around. We got to take this match more seriously this tonight. Well, someone so, had some common sense, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, from there, we get the match, which is, uh, Riddle, Randy Orton, Woods and Kofi versus Elias, Jackson, AJ, and almost. Uh, it was a good match for what it was. I uh, Back and forth. I love the Xavier Woods and AJ Styles exchange. I really think AJ can r- work with anybody, man. He really I can. Know what, he really that can. That was such a good exchange, that little two-minute thing they had. I thought, I was like, wow, I would watch this match if this was just a regular match on Raw or something. I just really thought it was good. Yeah, uh, I, I don't remember, and again, it's a promotion that you probably remember far more fondly than I do, but um, I wonder if... Is, if AJ he was the and Woods, yeah, Please. if they had any interaction in TNA, they're both Georgia guys, uh, so I'm sure that helps I, the cause a bit. I don't they, remember. Honestly, though. they probably did. I don't remember off the top of my head. That was a long time ago. I'm, I'm probably, they probably did on one of the impacts. I mean, they had to have, right? Was, I, but, I, um, I don't remember ever a long term program with them, but what no, they did no, no, on no. Raw was very good last night. Yeah, and I think um, AJ and Kofi worked very well together, and I think exactly. a, I think AJ and Orton worked very well together. He's just he's fantastic. I I, I don't uh, remember him having anything to do with Riddle individually as of yet, but I'm sure that'll come if it hasn't. Oh yeah, it definitely will. Uh, almost during the match, almost sorry, uh, missed that punch. Did you see that he missed yes. that on Riddle? And yes. still, I was like, he's oh, still my trying God. to connect the, twenty four hours announcers, later. All three of them. All three of them try to basically say, oh, he didn't get all of it. No, he didn't get any of it. <laughs> Adnan um, was trying to cover his fuck up. I know. Uh, RKO ends up going. Uh, basically, after that, Riddle's looking around. They both go out of the ring. You have Elias coming and uh, RKO on Elias. Randy pins him for the three count. Randy RK uh, basically looking at Kofi and Xavier Woods. They're looking around, you know, ready. You know, basically, you don't know what's going to happen, but you did. End up getting RKOs for both of them. Riddle says, how are we ever going to have friends if you always do this during our matches when we're with teams? I kind of like that line just because Randy's like, screw you, man, and just walks out of the ring. <laughs> and that really was the care. first hour of Raw. That was it. What, what a first hour it was. What did you think of the match? And I mean, did you? I thought it was good when AJ was in with anybody on the opposite side of the team. The rest left a little to be desired, but... You know, I'm not huge 
on Elias and Jackson Riker. And, you know, I think almost as a work in progress, as we obviously saw with this punch last night. Baby Shaq. Baby Shaq. There you go. That's what he looks like to me whenever I Sauceless see him wearing the Shaq, black. we can call him. Because if you see, he looks exactly like what Shaq did he, with the black tank tops. If it's like more like an arm sleeve, but still, he just looks like baby Shaq to me. Uh, so we return after uh, we return and we get uh, Sonya, Asuka, and Rhea backstage sure. with Sonya. Giving, they say, Sonya says she has an idea. You guys are going to go one-on-one tonight. Asuka says she's already wrestled, but she's ready to ready for a Rhea, because you know how she always does that. Um, nobody cares. And it's, it's just it's, another week. You know, one thing maybe we should keep track of, of these oddities that always stand out and annoy me, how many times each week on Raw, just to show how limited the women's division is, we get there's the same at least kind of one female wrestle more than once. Oh, yeah. That's that's, I, that, I bet that would be a very interesting I'll factoid. Doing in that. That. I bet I it's, do this, I bet do it's it. close to every week. I'll do at it. least I'll one of the females wrestle more than once. I mean, am I wrong, or does it seem no, that way you're to totally you too? No, you're totally right. Okay. I just never really say anything about it, but yeah, I'll stop paying attention to that. We'll figure this out, see if we're right. All right. Um, then we get uh, Seamus heading to the ring. We go to commercial. We come back. Um, Seamus is still in the ring, but we don't know that because obviously we get MVP and Bobby backstage. MVP says, excuse excuse me, could you be so rude? Because obviously he's trying to get uh, an interviewer trying to come over and says, asking Bobby about that question. Basically asking him, what, what did you think about if you could lose your title to, uh, lose to Drew McIntyre tonight? So, you know, the same old crap. The almighty, um, basically, almighty beats Drew part two is what Bobby says. I can beat both at the same time. Going to beat Drew again tonight. We do not comment on business acquisitions he said because then he asked him about what did braun what braun said about beating the crap out of drew and basically he can't wrestle at backlash uh was I there anyone it, that didn't see where this angle was going to go by the end of the night or was it just oh, me no obviously if you pay attention to wwe product you definitely know what it is i don't know i just to me it's this promo is not needed like it's just no, there but it's not it's needed. just more it's filler not, yeah, it's there's no point of it. We didn't establish anything, you know? I don't know. Uh, from there, we get Seamus on the mic. He says, I'm the baddest fella on the planet. Yeah. Talking smack about the champions before. Humberto is a great athlete, but needs to earn the U.S. title. Doesn't just get it. And uh, we get the match. Seamus versus Humberto Carrillo. Seamus just... Uh, makes everything look like it hurts, I put. Like, his matches, anybody he wrestles, he just makes it, like, that's what I like about him, is he makes it look like it hurts. I don't know if he's really hurting him, but he just makes it look like that. Uh, Sheamus He at least control. looks stiff when he's in there, which can, right. can't he be said about looks, a lot of guys. Right, he looks like he just makes it look it. Um, Sheamus is in complete control early on. Humberto starts getting some offense in, and it was a good match until... That bump when he tried to do a sunset flip, yeah. I've watched it a few times now, and I can really like his legs really did go false. Did yeah. you notice yeah. that? No, it was I, a scary that was moment. scary, man. Yeah, and so that's the ref sad just, just called for it. a guy that you know has been in no man's land for so long, finally getting a shot, and then you know what what in in the moment looked like it could have been a very 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 serious dangerous injury. Thank God that it, yeah, it wasn't. I did read that he's um he's okay. Like yeah. they don't expect him to miss any time, but I don't know. I had to watch it again because after I didn't know, I thought it was honestly a cell job. I just didn't think anything really happened because the rep didn't throw up the X or anything. So I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I went on later on that night at Twitter when it went off. I just wanted to see what was going on. And I seen that, um, that he really, what do you call it? Hurt himself. Like his legs literally just flopped. Yeah. And he was like this, he was doing something to somebody basically doing like, you know, the, the undertaker around his throat, then basically point to himself and doing, you know, shaking his hand, like, just gestures to say, basically, don't touch me right yet. No, it was I mean, crazy. That's that's a guy. Like I said, I think there's there's great long term potential in. You know, I would send him for some English classes to try and make his promos more great. understandable to, to those that don't speak Spanish. But um, you know, I know Howard Miller is a big fan of his, and that counts an awful lot as well. But you know, again, <laughs> knock on wood, he'll make a complete recovery, and he can get back into that feud with Sheamus. I was hoping. That might be a, a, a pay-per-view match we might see. They didn't get to quite that level yet. But, you know, like just to have him back on TV as a regular character, at least as a step in the right direction, that Ricochet oh, right would probably be begging for right about now. Oh, right? We need that. We need him. Uh, from there, which I was shocked about this, we got a video package for Lucha House Party. 
They might, wasn't, wasn't they that trying great? to reintroduce them? Wasn't that yeah, great? Yeah, I, I, I liked it. I thought they're trying imagine to imagine if they them, did that when they debuted. <laughs> Right. Well, that's what I put. I put, imagine if they did it, like if they did this from the beginning of them, because yeah. no one knew who the hell they were before. But you know what? If this is a good way to reintroduce them to people that whoever was watching at that time of night, mm-hmm. great. You know, great. And we, I, I don't know which one is which, but one of the two of them spoke great English. That's Lindsay. Okay. Well, that was my second guess. Um, I know, Lin- I, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, and it was even a good contrast. We had one spoke English, one spoke Spanish, a great masked Mexican tag team. You know, great. And, and we always Do say they need tag them. teams. Yep. Yeah. So this could a, be something. I, I yeah. again continue to believe releasing Callisto was a mistake. but And if we could rewind what you said last week, you were spot on. What did we get? <laughs> Cedric versus Sheldon. Uh-huh. I put why. Good match. Sheldon wins by pinfall. But why? Why did we get this? Why couldn't they? Do- you called it too. You said, I would love to see it on Backlash, but we'll probably get it next week. And what happened? And you want to know what I think uh. the saddest thing is? They om- The two of them almost come off as pathetic and desperate. Yeah, MVP right. acts them from the Hurt Business, yet they still wear the same fucking ring gear every week that they were war during the hurt business it's almost yep. like they got cut from a football team but don't want to take the jersey off it's like justin with his mask no, I mean, these things right. they will not remove them if they're going to go out there and wrestle they have to wear hurt business gear even if they've been gone from the hurt business for how long now probably at least a good three weeks right oh at least yeah it's pathetic. You know it's like they're too? desperate. Please. Maybe if, if I keep wearing match, the same tights, they'll bring us back. This match could happen on the pre, pre-show pre kickoff uh, backlash, though. Again, I feel like they might do that just because, you know, how they'll rehash it, yeah. which they should have just done it. But who knows? I'd rather see um, Dana Brooke come out and do her little Young Bucks-type muscle pose at the top of the ramp. That usually <laughs> adds a lot. I know you like that. Um, we'll get that later on, too. You love that. Yeah. Um, uh, from there, we got Angel Garza backstage doing a photo shoot, taking pictures with the Rose. Gulak interrupts, tells Angel he was embarrassed what happened last week. Garza says, next time, I'll shove it this down your throat. Um, so they're still having their little feud, their little exchange. We don't know where it's going to go, but hey. They're still build, at I least say, they're building to in more of a story. I say good. Remember one of the things that drove me nuts? <sighs> I don't even remember if we were doing regular review shows like this at the point, but it was right after WrestleMania last year when they put the title on McIntyre. Lesnar was obviously gone. They needed to build up credible new challenges for uh, McIntyre because, if you recall, his first two pay-per-view challenges after he won the title last year at WrestleMania, both took pinfall losses at WrestleMania, which to me was atrocious. Rollins no, lost to Kevin Owens, and of all people, Lashley lost to uh, Alistair Black at, at the uh, Warehouse WrestleMania. Both of those men should have won if they were going to be the first two world title challenges for McIntyre. But uh, to get back to my point, uh, just uh, it must have been within the first couple of weeks after R- Raw, because I almost pulled my hair out. He had an angle where he was attacked by Andrade, Angel, and Austin Theory when he was still with them. I don't know if you, I'm sure you remember that. I'm oh, sure yeah, a absolutely. lot of fans have long forgotten that. But Austin Theory <laughs> at one point was with that little Zelina Vega faction. And in one night, McIntyre, within about 40 seconds, destroyed all three destroyed of them and left them lame, yeah. never even getting a, a quality pay per view match out of any of it. And that's just to me. Again, it just shows the unbelievable lack of long-term thought, pacing, and patience that those shows have, that they let McIntyre destroy three poten- potential challenges within seconds. Seconds. Oh, I know. Right on. I <laughs> Blows me away, man. But as far as Angel goes, again, it's good to have him back featured on Raw. And a story. And he's and working. An actual little bit of story. Working from the bottom up as opposed yep. to the from the top to the bottom, which usually isn't a good case for someone's career, as we're seeing right now with the uh, with Cedric and Shelton. But, um, you know, put Shelton with, uh, not Shelton, uh, put Angel with uh, Gulak for a while. Put him with Tazawa in the Ninjas for a while and those types of undercard talents and slowly build them up. That's how the, I can only go by the format that I wor- watched work 
for so many decades in WWF, and that's what it was. You start them at the bottom, and you work the way up. Every once in a while, if you have a marquee talent, sure. If you have what you think is a surefire Hall of Famer like a Lesnar or an Orton or someone like or a Cena, okay, you bring them in with a bang. But for someone like Angel Gaza that certainly does not br uh, bring back memories of Lesnar or Cena, that's what you no. do with them. You put them at the bottom, and you slowly build them up. Oh, absolutely. I think it's great, too. I think... If, as long as they're going to keep on using them, I'll take this. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is not yeah, a bad at least way to they use them. Right so right on. Sometimes you got to take what you can get. Exactly. So from there, we get our second women's match of the night. We get Asuka versus Rhea Ripley, which we found out was going to happen earlier in the night. Uh, we have um, it's a good match going on. Then Charlotte comes out for some reason. She ends up getting on the commentary. Uh, Rhea wins a uh, good match. Like I said, Rhea wins by pinfall. I don't really know. They didn't do much. Like, there's no buildup for it. So it's like, yeah, it was just a match. And like you said, we get the same people on the same shows every single week. So it's kind of hard to even write about them anymore. Yeah. It's just, you know, same thing repeatedly. For the women, especially. Yeah. Well, the Be men too. Look but... at, you're talking about a roster of about what, eight to 10 women. Yeah. How many different true. matches are you going to be able to get out of that? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell the, you know, but whatever. Like I said, what did you think? Anything's come out of the match? Anything on commentary with Charlotte? I expected I, I more out of it. You know, Charlotte's yeah. new face looked nice. <laughs> oh, oh, you're too funny with that. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, from there, we get a Drew promo. He's backstage. Oh, just talks about we needed the another pointless, boring Drew McIntyre promo to help get him over even less. Yeah, he said, uh, basically talks about the match tonight and then says he's going to connect on the Claymore that he didn't get to connect to at WrestleMania. Oof. So, Oof. here we go. All I right. was ready, baby. Yes, you were. I from want a little clay less, the... but what are you going to do? <laughs> yep. Uh, from there, we get John Morrison with The Miz versus Damian Priest. Um, decent match going on. Miz working his way in the match throughout the thing. Keep on jumping on the rope. You know, the apron coming down. Uh, I thought it was a good match. Priest win by pinfall, which was the right thing, I think. Uh, Miz attacks Priest after the match, which is probably going to lead to another. Obviously, at Backlash, we'll find out later on or next Monday. Who knows? They already announced the stipulation. No, no I mean, um, I'm sorry from uh, John Morrison uh, and Damian Priest again because you know that oh, they're going to have oh, this thing. Oh, you know oh, what you I'm know, saying? They'll have another match, yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know, one thing I can say is I think they've done a decent job in the buildup of Damian Priest, even if Morris. At least Miz he's are working idiots. with the Miz. I think the Miz yeah. is a perfect person for him because at least the Miz yeah. can help yeah. him. You know, Miz nothing is wrong a, with is that. A, like I've said, he is to me the personification of what a mid card intercontinental type heel should be. Uh, oh, with, absolutely. With, with Priest, again, I think the buildup has been good. But, you know, his explanation for wanting the Lumberjack match I thought was a little ridiculous. You'd think with what he was trying to describe, he'd want a steel cage match to keep the interference out. But they just did a steel cage match at WrestleMania, so they're not going to so steal like... Stone Cold's thunder. So that's where I guess they came up with this Lumberjack idea, which no one really well, will care about. Like you said, we after that we find out uh Pearson Priest is backstage. Priest says he wants a lumberjack match against uh the Miz to keep him in the ring because he's always running away. Then big we get the main event that we've been waiting for, Bobby oh, yeah. Lashley with MVP versus Drew McIntyre. Uh hard hitting match, good match, back and forth. I don't think it was as good as the um WrestleMania one, but I thought it was a pretty good match. Uh, Braun comes out and just starts attacking Drew, which we knew was going to happen. Like you made, like you said before, we knew what the outcome was going to be in yep, this. Absolutely. Um, he comes out. He just uh, he he's uh, Braun and Bobby are trying to hug because basically Braun, you know, slammed Drew, but Braun ain't having it. Braun turns on him, just starts slamming him. He's slamming everybody. Slams Bobby through the barricade. And Braun, uh, Braun is sitting there with his arms in the air and just looking mean in the camera, which. I wish they would make Braun like this all the time because I this know. is a good Braun. This we, is a uh, the nice The aggressive Braun. Braun is a great Braun. There was a lot right. of slamming going on. Hasn't been as much slamming going on since you were with your Tinder pigs down uh -oh. in Tampa. Whoa. There was a lot of slamming going on in the, the bedroom that weekend, but uh -oh. that's a different story uh -oh. for a different time. But yes, Braun sir. Strowman was slamming everybody. Yeah, he was, and that's how they went off the air. I guess, 
We'll see what happens at Backlash. I don't know. Did it make you want to watch the pay-per-view this Sunday? No. Okay, so didn't do that. <laughs> and there was nothing. They, they, they did nothing on the show to make me interested in any of the matches that I was aware of leading into it. <laughs> I, I'm thinking of the whole card. Nothing. Maybe nothing if they on the cut. if they turned Orton on Riddle and those two are going to have a singles match, that might have piqued my curiosity a little bit. But with what I know of the card on the Raw side, at least on Sunday. I couldn't care less. But I do know, I do know that I can officially state now, since I have it in hand, thanks to friends in WWE, we're going to have a tremendous main event uh, piece for the uh, Wheel of Fortune slash Ring of Fortune that we break out for the big pay-per-view live really? watch along. It's an art piece signed by Drew McIntyre, one of 50. Whoa. Whoa. So we're going to have more information. I'm even going to put a picture up online once I, I get it out of the package. And, you know, Justin was thought it might look good on his wall, hidden behind one of his masks, but I told him he couldn't <laughs> have it. So some lucky fan that supports the show is oh, going to get a really cool collectible. It. I mean, that's one that you could probably throw up on eBay for a for 100 200 bucks. But we don't want you to do that. Well, we they can do whatever they it. want with it as long <laughs> no, as they but we did. we don't want I mean, them to do that. <laughs> they can do we whatever they want with it. It's theirs. Yeah, but, but it's a great collectible it. for the Drew McIntyre fan, or if you're just someone that likes to collect rare wrestling pieces. One of 50, that's kind of rare to get. And I got to admit, I may not be the world's biggest Drew McIntyre fan, but it's a cool looking drawing from, I believe his name is Rob Schamberger. He's yep, also yep. autographed the piece as well. Uh, oh, and, he did? Yep, yeah, signed by both oh, Drew wow. and so Schamberger. That's really cool. That's big time because that's like the big uh, wrestling guy that draws all the. Uh, wrestling stuff that's really cool i didn't yeah. know that wow so you that's know really me cool. i like to try and make our fans happy we like to reward them when they chip in and help we desperately need the help after what was a disaster of a month of april due to wrestle house in tampa uh but you know we got we got big things happening we got uh, demolition acts the double header may 22nd may 23rd you know new jack is itching to come back in june our favorite marty Janetti is ready to come back in june so you know what? If we want to have these people in, we need that fan participation. And that's exactly, and that's what we need. We need you fans to help us so we can bring in great guys. Like Dan said, it's going to be a great month, busy month. We have the watch along this Sunday. But let's give our grade before we forget. I gave Raw a 5 out of 10. Like I said, I thought it didn't make me want to watch the pay-per-view this Sunday, which obviously I would regardless I thought we had some good exchange between AJ. We talked about that. A couple good things in the, uh, you know, that match. A couple good things in the main event. But I thought eh, it was a five out of ten for me. What did you give it? I was a little lower than you. I went four out of ten just because it really built nothing. You know, you have the pay per view right. Sunday, the go home. There should have been a little heat put on something of interest, and there really wasn't. I mean, like you said, there was. Uh, you had a couple of nice moments in an eight-man tag, but on one team, you only had one out of four guys that could work. I enjoyed Seltri Seltric. C Cedric <laughs> and Shelton. I don't understand why Cedric screams constantly without a microphone. Have you noticed that? That Cedric oh, yeah, is just absolutely. constantly screaming? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I, totally I don't know why, true. but I thought maybe you did. No, I it's have just no he's idea angry either. at this point. He never screamed he's, like that during the Hurt Business days. Maybe no, he was hurt that angry. MVP got rid of him. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. And he's mad at Sheldon. But uh, so other than gave, that, there was just you know, it was just more repetitive women shit. You know, more of the uh, just they tried. It wasn't your cup. Yeah, that's why I went as high as a four. They all tried, but to me, this should have been almost like the two weeks after a pay per view. The raw after yeah. the pay per view should have some sizzle on it. Then the week after you start to start doing the slow build leading up to the next one. This I mean, was not a go home day. raw. Remember back in the day, the go home was one of the raws you'd want to watch because it was going to be unbelievable. Yeah. Now it's and you'd usually get the, 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 whatever the top two matches on the show were in a tag team match. Yep, that was right. the formula for almost everything. Yep. But what are you? Gonna I don't do? know. What are you going to do? From there, the, I have I have a just a one piece of news. Let's see where is it? I put it down uh, right here. I guess uh, this is reported from your um, you know your buddy Dave Meltzer that August twenty second is going to take place SummerSlam this year. They haven't announced a place for it, but that looks like the date for SummerSlam. Well, what do you we'll have think to of mark that? it on our calendars. What do I think so of it? Good. I think August twenty second is a great day. 
I have August no idea 22nd. why, but I look. Oh, I awesome. just hope it's in a place where they can have full capacity, jammed to pack to the rafters, and that wherever it may be, we will be. Yep, absolutely. I'm ready Excellent. to feel the heat, baby. I want to feel the heat, man. I need to go. I, I can't take this anymore. I would, and you know, I, I would love to see a and stadium I did atmosphere. Read, I did actually read one other thing: is that's going to kick off them going back to having shows with fans too. I think it's a great idea if it is. That's what I read. That's what your Uncle Dave said, your best bud said. So I don't know how he's my best bud considering how many interactions I've had with him over the year. Because but I, you, I, you, I think he's a nice guy. He's been helpful to me at times. I've been maybe helpful to him on a couple of times. I won't go in that direction. But I, I like I said, I for the people that knock him, I, I get it. But I don't think they understand um, how valuable of an asset he's going to be as time goes on. <laughs> an asset. Yeah, well, an ass. Pretty much an ass, not an asset. I know buddy. there are people on podcasts that want to present themselves a certain way. I get it. And sometimes his history, like I said, there are times he's reported things that are 100% wrong, but they are things that came up in the context of discussion. I think sometimes the problem with him is where he interjects his personal opinion and what should be news reporting. His opinion on what, you know, like what do people always say, the Japan matches, I mean, you know, that has nothing to do with reporting news. That's his personal opinion. So that's, the, that's the area sometimes where I can see the people that may knock him where they have a valid point. As far as what he reports, like I said, I, I do not believe at all that the man has ever sat at his typewriter or computer and just made up fictitious news to fill a newsletter. I think what I think he's done, and like I always say, is I think he watches wrestling like me, you, and we think of storylines, and we're like, this is how it should go, and then that's what he writes up, though. I do think he does that, because he's like, uh, you know, booking his own territory. Booking I'd his have own to thing. examine it better. I don't know. But I, That's I just what know, I think he does. You know, I, and I'll be up front. I, I voted in his Hall of Fame before I was asked, and I was actually honored to, um, you know, be asked to vote in a Hall of Fame that's actually voted on as opposed to a WWE Hall of Fame that generally they just sit around in a meeting of a few people and they try and come up with some random names each year. I think, to be fair to him, I think his Hall of Fame, a, a lot of thought goes into it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to knock that. You're right. I mean, I think it's good that he does that part, but with the, I can do without all his other stuff. But anyways, that's what I got I think it's tough when news. you interject news and opinion in the same form. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? I mean, yeah, absolutely. But uh, that's how he's done it. And you know what? The guy's making six figures a year, so he's got to be doing something. I don't right. know how the Sitting there writing his that. newsletter every week. He's done pretty well for himself with it. It's disgusting. I well, I don't know that. if I'd call it disgusting. I know Howard subscribes to it, but that's all right. That's how I read it. <laughs> Howard loves it. Oh, but that's all I got for news. That's all we this. got. All right, baby. Well, if you want to talk about news, don't forget the next three weekends, we got hot weekends here in the world of Boston wrestling. Again, Sunday night, we have that big WrestleMania backlash pay-per-view watch along where you can win that Drew McIntyre personally autographed art piece. We have the demolition doubleheader. Saturday, May the 22nd, Sunday, May the 23rd, where the legendary Demolition Axe, a.k.a. Bill Eady, joins us. Uh, he had his Clark Griswold adventure headed to WrestleMania from Georgia, where he was unable to join us at the Wrestle House, so he's coming to Boston. Then we round out the month of May. Le I was going to say Labor Day weekend. We'd be awfully early for that. Memorial Day weekend with AEW, I believe, double or nothing. There we go. So can't I'm, beat that. You can't beat that, baby. The price is right. Well, hopefully we'll have the Ring of Fortune, the Wheel of Fortune out for the AEW pay-per-view as well. I'm, I have a few ideas in mind for that, but we have a great month ahead. Again, we need your support, folks. Uh, the New Jack episodes that are coming your way are out of this world. They are going to be Patreon-exclusive versions at first. You're going to have to wait a few weeks to get them. We want to give the Patreons as much bang for their buck as possible because they are not our Patreon friends. They are not our Patreon fans. They are our Patreon Boston Wrestling family over at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. And for that... You guys are going to get all that great New Jack content early. Again, it is adult-themed. 
It is a adult oh, boy. theme. This is not one you oh, want to share with the wife and kids. Oh, New Jack boy. is an opinionated man, and he has a very colorful way of expressing himself, I guess is a good way to put it. Not to say that we didn't have a tremendous amount of fun, but dot, dot, dot. So there we go with New Jack. Again, patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Help us keep the lights on because, baby, we got an electric bill to pay and then some. Hey, Dave, any final thoughts before we go? That's all I got. I got nothing. We'll see you this Sunday for the watch along for WrestleMania Backlash. And don't forget, tonight at 10 p.m., we're pulling out the classics. It is Tony Atlas, the WWE Hall of Famer, explaining his love, uh, his lust for women's shoes. And we have his personal home footage of him being beaten by a woman with feet. Oh, it is. I don't know if you saw the trailer we released of it. But Tony's face literally gets walked on and stomped Ugh, tonight on Wrestling Insiders at 10 p.m. Maybe that'll explain why he went crazy and turned heel on us. I don't know. Watch it at 10, folks. We'll have some laughs and some fun. For Dave Cotter, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll be back with another review show. What, tomorrow? We'll have NXT. Tomorrow. NXT. Sounds like a deal, folks. Check out NXT. Then at 10, it's Tony Atlas. Have a good night. The World Wrestling Federation was live in Plainville, Connecticut, Monday, May the 11th, 1981. In the opening contest, Steve King drew Angelo Gomez. Yoshiaki Yatsu beat Johnny Rods. Dominic Danucci with the win over the Hangman. Farmer Jerome and the Carolina Kid defeated Sky Lolo and Kid Chocolate. And in the main event, WWF World Champion Bob Backlund retained the title over Killer Khan. If you are in Plainville Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. At WrestleMania 37, she defeated Asuka to become the new Raw Women's Champion. And here is your chance to own a piece of Rhea Ripley on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. Number 50 of only 50 made includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo and an on-air thank you on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Rhea Ripley autograph poster now.